function keyboard on the big screen. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday men's breakfast at 8 a.m. Uh, are we still going to do that, Pete? Um, we, we can. I mean, we've got plenty of time. Yeah. It's, it's I guess, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the same day as, uh, yes, it is. as Claude's funeral, so it's at 11 o'clock if you didn't know what time it is right. for 11 o'clock here at Bethel Union. Uh, May 6th, the VBS meeting at Baptist Country Chapel at 9 a.m. And May 7th, potluck after service and the board meeting after potluck. May 14th, we have the baby bottle campaign starting up again. This is a spare change drive starting on Mother's Day for the carrying pregnancy to be collected on Father's Day. And they'll start getting some bottles here for too long that you guys can start uh, filling up. Birthdays is May 1st, Fred Scubel. We don't have nobody tortured today, so uh, if you t see him, tell him happy birthday, though. Uh, our prayer spotlight. Help me with this. Emily. Emily? Emily. Emily. De Raw, okay. So. You're, you're our prayer spotlight today? Oh, she's gone. Oh, okay. 
Well, tell her we're praying for her this week, okay? So if you happen to see her, let her know you're praying for her. And, and uh, it's good to see you here. You can see everybody here. Uh, anybody have any other prayers, praises, concerns, or... Uh, well, we'll continue with our prayer needs and praises. Opal, Opal, Opal where are you at? Ah. Verl did? How's he doing? So so. <laughs> okay, knee replacement, so we'll be praying for Verl. Okay. Anybody else that I looked over? <laughs> now I gotta look clear over the. Lord. Anybody else? Well, we'll continue our prayer needs and praises. Uh, the loss in the Rinker and Dutton family, we'll be praying for them families. Uh, surgery for Amy Shook. What's she doing? She's having surgery tomorrow. Um, she has a nodule or something in her, in her breast. And oh, okay. A day surgery, so. Good. Well, we'll be praying for her then. All the testing and stuff, and uh, she, she feels pretty routine. Well, that's good. Well, we'd definitely be praying for her. Uh, Al Travis, praying for him. Sam Moots, Rodney Mead, any update on Rodney? He seems seems to be doing some better. He's so. doing better. Okay, good. Uh, Ryan Perspacher for Carolyn. Uh, I talked to Kevin last night, and, and uh, he's taken, he's going to actually take Carolyn to uh, Denver on Wednesday. He's not sure what time, but sometime Wednesday and and uh, for skin cancer surgery so anyway I'd be praying for her on that too uh, for Sue Leach uh, she's doing doing all right I guess she seems to be doing yeah her numbers are coming coming up so or coming down or whichever's good so anyway she's doing good in that respect uh, Jeanette Bozar uh, Von Axtell uh, Alan Severin, and for, like I said, Ruby and Claude, we pray for both of them that, oh, yeah. that uh, yeah, we need to fix that. But uh, we just pray that uh, their families, like I said, they know where Claude's going. We know where he is, and we just pr thank the Lord for that. Uh, Vicki Larson and Justin Bollinger. Any update on Justin at all? Same. Same. Our outreaches, our buccaneers, our prison ministries, youth groups, our VBS, and our worship team, our country, unspoken prayer needs and praises, and our missionaries. Danielle is uh, our daughter-in-law. It's getting real close. She hasn't had her baby yet, but it'll be any time now, so we're looking forward to that, praying for her. Uh, I think, did we have a minister on me? Yeah, we, I thought we did. No, I think you're fine. Okay. Okay, we got a newsletter from Aaron and Danielle, and I'm just going to read it, and then they have a clip of, of kind of the ministry that they'll be going into. Um, <clears throat> Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Psalm 96.3. Minor update. First, we are beyond excited to share that we're having a baby boy in just a few weeks. His 
Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, there you go. Uh, in just a few weeks, there we go. His due date is May 7th, 2023. We are, thank we are thankful for God's precious gift to us and can't wait to start our new adventure with our little one. Thank you for praying for us as we eagerly await our baby's arrival and prepare to raise him in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We are thankful for God's provision for a Christian doctor as well as a good hospital nearby our flat in Hong Kong to have him. It has been an incredible experience watching him grow and develop these last, these last eight months and we can't wait to meet him and continue to watch him grow and develop, not only physically, not only, I'm terrible at finding my spot, uh, but into, God, into a godly man the Lord desires him to be. Please pray for wisdom and guidance for us as we prepare for this new and exciting chapter in our lives. Also pray for a safe delivery and speedy recovery for D Danielle. As excited as, as it is to share with you the fantastic news of having a baby, we are e even have more news to share with you. The Lord has placed on our hearts that it is time to take a leap of faith and leave Hong Kong after living there the past seven years. Over the last two years, the Lord has really blessed us with being able to serve at our local church and in doing so has really given us a burden to plant a church among an unreached people group who by definition have no access to the gospel, no Bible in their language and no lo local church. In January of 2021, we attended a virtual missions conference where we were introduced to a church plant planting training program called Radius International. The president of Radius has spent 10 years in Papua New Guinea sharing the gospel and eventually planting a church among an unreached people group named the Yembi Yembi. As we watched this story, we were challenged by the fact that 98% of missions and missions giving in the world goes to places that are by definition considered to be reached by the gospel and only 2% of missions are focused on places where for hundreds of years, people have been born, lived, and died without having any access to the gospel. With this, we began to feel more and more burdened with this incredibly great need. It became clearer and clearer that the Lord was calling us to be part of that 2%. As we continued to, be, to learn more about this great imbalance in missions, we began to pray fervently for the Lord, for the Lord's direction for us. Okay, and see if I can get this. And there's a video. There's a video. After nine years, the moment has come. The missionaries have phased out of the tribe, leaving a church body with trained pastors for a new generation. The last step is providing them with a Bible in their native tongue. This occasion is honored by a dedication that brings hundreds of native believers, neighboring missionaries, and even supporters from back home. It is a celebration of heavenly proportions. I want to hear the music play. I want to hear the trumpet sound. I want to hear you call my name and watch my feet lift off the ground. to wonder, what am I doing here? Will this matter? Will it even last? Now I just stand in wonder. How did God take us, a few regular people, to this remote village in the middle of the jungle, 
to plant the seed of his word and watch it grow. Watch it transform and see the dead brought to life and hear a new people proclaim God's glory in their own language. This is just one story of one tribe, but there are thousands just like them, still waiting to hear.
It has been two years since that conference, and we only feel more compelled and convinced that it's time for us to begin taking steps in this direction. We wish that we could share all the Lord has done to guide us down the, this path in the past path in the last two years, but it would make for a much longer newsletter. But needless to say, it hasn't been a rash decision, and the Lord's hand has been clear throughout the process, with even the elders of our local church here in Hong Kong coming alongside us and confirming that they will happily send us out as well as be a part of the process. This is especially timely now that we have been com have completed our two-year ministry training program with our local church that has been overseeing our elders so overseen by our elders and have spent much time in God's word and other resources growing and learning about what, what it looks like to help and serve and build a healthy church. We applied to Radius, the Radius program this past January and found out shortly after that we have been accepted. Despite the high standards they require for their applicants, This intensive course, this intensive training course is a 10-month program located in Tijuana, Mexico. A unique aspect of RADIUS is that the instructors that will be training us have all successfully planted a healthy church among an unreached people group. We will begin classes in August of 2023 and will graduate June 2024. So for us, this means leaving Hong Kong shortly after the baby is born, depending are spending a short time during the summer with our family and friends in America before heading south across the San Diego-Mexican border. At times, this can feel very overwhelming and intimidating, especially with having our first baby right around the same time. But we are thankful for the Lord's comfort, grace, and strength, knowing that we are being obedient to him in his word. We are thankful for God's provision for us. <clears throat> This past season, while Danielle was working at the church full time, we trust, we trust that he will continue to provide for us as we begin to raise support once again for our radius tuition as well as for our future church planning endeavor. As we have been seeking the Lord and praying about which unreached people group that the Lord may have us to go to, we are continually burdened for having a heart for the people in northern Laos. 76% of the people groups in uh, of Laos are currently considered unreached with the gospel, which includes 96 different people groups who have absolutely no access to the gospel because of language and cultural barriers. So Lord willing, after our training in Mexico, we will make our way back to Asia, move to Laos, and begin the process of learning the language and culture with the end goal of reaching one of these unreached groups with the gospel and establishing a healthy Christian, Christ-centered local church that will be equipped with what it needs to mature, self-multiply, and endure difficulties, uh, the difficulties of, a cult, of the culture and region they live in. According to Open Doors, the level of persecution in Laos, Laos is very high as they are numbered 31 on the persecution world watch list. Laos is one of the few remaining communist countries in the world, which is one of many reasons why so many of these minor groups remain unreached with the gospel. As we have researched and prayed for this country, we recognize that the scripture is true, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So please pray for us as we plan to prepare to enter God's harvest field in Laos. We recognize that going to Laos, learning the language, and eventually planting a church will take a long-term commitment for many years. So please pray for us that we count the cost, take the step, take steps of faith, and trust the Lord with, with the end results. We are very excited for what the Lord may have us have for us and for his people in the coming years ahead. Romans 15, 20 through 21. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard, of, heard will understand. God says in the Great Commission that we 
as his children are to go out into all the nations preaching the gospel and baptizing in his name and so you know that's uh, what he calls us to do and and there's uh, some that are called to go further and into the different nations and we just pray for them that uh, God will have his hand in, in there and will protect them through whatever endeavor that he's chosen for them so let's go to the Lord in prayer our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for your infinite, infinite wisdom, Lord. We, we don't even, uh, can't even comprehend how infinite you are, Lord, that uh, you just grasped the heavens that we, we see out there, as to, we call infinite, Lord, but you can roll them up in one swipe of your hand or your breath and, and dissolve them, Lord. And Lord, we know that uh, you are much bigger that you are, are the existence of everything. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your, your wisdom, your knowledge, your power, and your salvation, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, as your children, that, that uh, we will have one day to have that eternal life with you and they'll glorify you and honor you, Lord. And Lord, we just uh, lift up those today that uh, we've mentioned the families that with loss and, and with... Uh, uh, situations in their life, Lord, that uh, you will be with them and just strengthen them and hold them and, 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 and let them know that you are always, always in control. Lord, we know that and we just pray that uh, we honor you in our lives and that we can be light to others as we go through this week. I ask you just uh, be with us as we go through today, uh, hear God's word through Pete, that uh, we can not only be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand and sing? To God be the glory. Glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Jesus. 
turn to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, starting with verse 6. I actually got it on. I think. Starting with verse 6. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart. Go out from here. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. But you will not leave in haste. Or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the Lord, the God of Israel, will be your rear guard. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond any human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For they were not told, for what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. God's word. Next song we're going to sing is Holy, Holy.
some people come forward to take up the offering. for this offering. We thank you for the chance to give to you, Lord, to give to this church, to give to your, to your body to further your work. Take our offerings, and may it be consecrated unto you, and may you bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. it up.
my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, Bless your name. You know, I, I, I look all around, you know, as I'm driving through the countryside, and, and this country is really greening up. You know, everything's starting to break out of dormancy. The tree blossoms are just about ready to explode with, with their colors. And, and, and the, the branches, you, you look at the branches, the, the greenness is just about ready to pop out on those, those barren branches that we saw all winter long. The fields are turning green. You know, everything is beginning to grow. You know, unless a seed dies and is planted, it remains a single seed. And we, we look at this season as a hope and a comfort for what awaits and a comfort for those that have, have gone. Let's, let's turn to Exodus 3, please. We live in a fallen world. We, we live in a world where, where Jesus bids us to go and take his message. 
the message of reconciliation, a message of forgiveness. You know, God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. This message starts here. It starts here. Yes, Jesus told the disciples to go into all the world, but it started in Jerusalem. And from there, the message turned the world upside down. I was reminded of the reach of our church by our praise and worship team. Ruby, Ruby um, asked specifically, everybody that plays and everybody that sings on the worship team, please come and be a part of the, the funeral and the memorial service for Claude on Wednesday. But also, uh, I was reminded during COVID, Becky put together some, some songs that we could use remotely uh, when we were doing our, our services on, on the remote. And two years ago, I, I posted some on YouTube, or one on YouTube particularly, and it started getting a lot of views. And I looked at it, and, and wow, it was, it was over 10,000 views for that song. And so I posted a couple more. And I posted uh, When the Roll is Cold Up Yonder about uh, four months ago. And I looked at it Friday, and it had 14,000 views. I mean, just, just a simple song of a place where it's reaching 14,000 people to view it. You know, of over 780 posts, um, the top four songs have 72,000 views from this church. You know, my most popular sermon has 98 views. <laughs> 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 now, 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 Carson, he's got 250 views for one of his sermons. So, but, uh, but we, we, we need to record some more songs, Becky, uh, more songs to get them out there. But during the last Buccaneers, during prayer time, one of the Buccaneers had, had, a, had a real nice request, pray for world peace. And every time the kids ask for world peace, I say, where does it begin? You know, if we're going to have world peace, are you at peace at home with your brother, your sister, your mama, right? How about you with your husbands, your spouses, your wives? How are we doing with that world peace? You know, I think we should pray for world peace and ultimately reconciliation of the world to God. You know, reach those un unreached people groups. It starts at home. How are we doing at home? How are, we, how are we doing at work? How are we doing in our world? And telling people about what God has done for them through our lives. You know, Moses was chosen by God to free Israel from slavery. At 40 years of age, Moses made his own effort. He defended an Israelite, and he killed an Egyptian. He was doing what he was called to do. I don't know. But he wasn't ready to be used of God to free the Israelites. It was 40 years later, after Moses had started a family and, uh, and had shepherded a flock. And God says, okay. He posts himself on the mountainside in a burning bush. And uh, in Exodus 3, starting with verse 1, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over to see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am. Do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. 
So I have come down to rescue them from the land, from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way of the Egyptians are seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God says, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Well, let's turn to John 13. You know, Moses was finally ready at 80 years of age. You know, at this point of Moses' life, you know, he didn't think he was ready. God, who am I? Who am I that you should send me? And in fact, later on in the passage that we read out of Exodus, he says, he says I can't even talk. Send someone else. And God was kind of angry with him. He says, who made your tongue? Right? Moses had learned what it was like to be a family man and a shepherd. Maybe this was the reality check he needed to be contrasted with with the the way the Egyptian rulers ruled their lands. Let's see if I can keep this thing on. For whatever reason, as Moses hears from God at the burning bush, Moses initially declined the offer. It was the I am that expressly sent Moses and empowered him to do many signs and wonders to culminate with the last sign of Passover. You know, continuing through John, the I am is now preparing for the fulfillment of the first Passover. That fulfillment. Jesus has been working with an eclectic group of men. You know, four of them were sailors or fishermen. One of them was was a tax collector. One of them was a zealot, okay? Zealots really liked tax collectors a lot, right? Really liked them. Um, Jesus put these all in, and then finally, uh, Jesus picks a, 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 a thief and a betrayer, someone that's going to betray him. And he takes this group, this, this, this family, they, they were different. The 12 apostles were not only different in background and lifestyles, but they were also natural enemies brought together when called by Jesus. The message of reconciliation to the world started here as this set of misfits melded together as brothers and apostles of Jesus. You know, Peter, James, and John, they, they witnessed the, the glory of Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus basically says, be quiet about this until... I'm raised from the dead. But, but, but now Jesus is going to demonstrate his servanthood, how much he loves his disciples. And instead of telling his disciples to take off their sandals because the ground that they are standing on is holy ground, Jesus puts around him a towel and he takes a wash basin. In John 13, starting with verse 1, the I am, Jesus stoops to clean their feet. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. 
And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash your feet, wash you, you have no part with me. You know, th- this washing was a big deal. <laughs> and, and leave it up to Peter to cause a stir. You know, sometimes we need Peters. You know, <laughs> Peter, Peter didn't have a filter. You know, if it weren't for Peter, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be limited on, on what this foot washing is. Jesus washed the feet. And Peter stubbornly resists. You know, he, he couldn't seem to take that the Son of God, the Son of Man, could do the, the I am, could do such a humble thing to someone that was so much lower and below that. I remember when I was a, a kid, I had this terrible acne on my chest. And I was so embarrassed. I always kept it covered. And, and one time I was, I, was, I was running with a wheelbarrow and the front of the wheelbarrow caught on something and, and I, I raked my whole chest open with this, this crazy wheelbarrow and it was just blood everywhere. And my mom saw it and I couldn't hide it anymore. And so she, she took me to a dermatologist, but I was still so embarrassed at the dermatologist that, um, yeah, I got... I got a zit here, and I got some, I got some, I got some blackheads in my ear. I'm gonna have to tape this thing to me or something. I tried, I tried tape, tape this morning, and it was, it just kept coming off. But I think I'll get some duct tape or something. But, <laughs> but anyways, I, I go to this dermatologist, and, and I, I point out all this stuff, and he gives me some medicine, you know, to dab on there. It was green, and uh, it was kind of like iodine type stuff. And so I took this medicine that was prescribed for, for my face, the little acne, and I started daubing it on my open wound on my chest. And man, it just burned. Probably wasn't the right thing to do. Um, I probably could have left it and let it heal on its own and better, better off. But it, I survived. I survived. But uh, whoa. sometimes we're so embarrassed you know, about who we are and what our sins are. And, 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 and Jesus, I need washed. I need washed. I, I need reconciliation. I, I need my sins not to be counted against me. And oh, how I want to hide it all from you. But then he takes my sin and he throws it as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers it no more. It's a lot better than that green stuff that I was putting on my chest. Jesus knew all things. At this time, Jesus washing the feet was enough. The great physician knows exactly the sin in our lives, and he, and he knew Peter was going to deny him three times. He doesn't shout it out to all our friends and family. He provides cleansing, healing, and reconciliation. In in verse 9, Then the Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. you What Jesus did was enough. You know, what, what Jesus offers was enough. What Jesus offers is enough. Peter wanted more than Jesus provided, but what Jesus did was enough. Moses didn't think he had enough to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Who are you? And then God says, who made your tongue, Moses? Peter sure opens the the questions we may have. 
The Jews added so many regulations to God's laws to complete them. And so often we subconsciously or consciously add stuff to Jesus' complete work for, for, for freedom and don't realize that faith in Jesus is enough. Perhaps the more we add to the work of Christ, the more doubtful we become. We doubt our salvation. We doubt our ability to be ambassadors for Christ as, as his words speak through us. You know, be reconciled to God. There's a warning, though. Not all are clean. It was obvious to Jesus. It was obvious to Judas. You know, we get in a, a weakened state all too often. We, we can wonder and even doubt if Jesus can save us. One of, one of Claude's thoughts um, toward, toward the end, you know, a couple weeks ago, was, uh, how do I know? And uh, Ruby was talking to Wayne, and he was a little bit worried, and, and Wayne says, you know, just, just, he was told that if you worry, not to worry. If you're worried about it, don't worry about it. Because that's, that's when you're depending on Jesus' blood for your salvation. Moses didn't think he was enough. Peter wanted to have his hands and head washed. Judas, um, oh, verse 11, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Please, let's turn to Romans 10, 8. This is where it starts. You know, we, we learn to wash each other's feet. You know, I, I, I liked in the scene uh, of the Jesus Revolution where, where the church was having a problem with the hippies coming into the church and, and, and making the new shag carpet dirty. And it was, it was a big deal. And, uh, you know, these hippies, they were coming to church barefoot. And Chuck Smith figured out a biblical way to save the shag carpet. I think if you could click it forward... What is going on? Just place that right over there on that towel. And this other one here. There we go. Yeah. Baptize these feet in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There you go. Uh, welcome to church. <laughs> Hello. Let's have that foot, please. Okay. Place them both on that towel and then. Step on into church. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, young lady. How are you? Good. Let's have the foot. Let's have that other foot. <laughs> You go sit next to that fella in the cantaloupe jacket. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank Enjoy. You. Welcome to church. Thank you. Hello, young lady. Well, last year I had the privilege of visiting uh, New York City. And like any good tourist, I paid a visit to the Statue of Liberty. And I read those famous words Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. And as I read those words, I thought, well, that's Christianity, isn't it? It's the essence of it. An invitation to the broken. Jesus was very friendly with the outcasts. In Revelation 22, it says, let the one who can hear say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who desires Take the waters of life freely. This place 
it is yours. If you feel like you're misunderstood and judged, this is where you belong. If you feel ashamed or trapped in something you've done or are doing, you will find forgiveness and freedom right here. After this foot washing, the ministry of Calvary Chapel went viral. It made it to the New York Times, in the New York Times. Through Jesus, we don't stand before a holy God as sinners before the flames. We're not leprous in our sins, spreading uncleanliness. When Jesus touched the leper, he didn't become unclean. The leper became clean and healed. When, when, when Jesus touched the dead, he didn't become unclean. He raised the dead. When Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, He forgave them. He cleansed them. And when he washes our feet, Jesus lifts up us to be messengers of freedom to a lost and dying world. You know, Jesus takes off our sandals and cleanses us from all unrighteousness so that we can not only stand blameless before a holy God, the great I am, but also walk with clean feet to spread his message of reconciliation as ambassadors for the cross. You know, the, the, the feet are an important symbol of ambassadorship, of being sent, of going out. You know, Moses was more humble than any other man as, as, he, as he wrote in, in uh, Numbers 12, 3. You know, I, I, I like it that it's in quotation marks, so somebody else might have thrown it in there. Um, but uh, Peter, you know, he, he asked Jesus, go away from me, for I'm a sinful man. In Luke 5, 8, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. In Romans 10, verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can we call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I, did, but I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out in, into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. And it continues to go to the ends of the world. Let's, let's turn back to Isaiah 52, 14. Where does this message start? You know, as I, as I look at this, this washing of the feet, 
and compare it with that of the feet related to the Bible. It, it, it's a beautiful feat of humility of Jesus. As a servant of love, you know, right at the start, Jesus wanted to show them how much he loved them. It also seems to be connected with the one being, ones being sent. Feet travel. Beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Even in the Old Testament passage out of Isaiah that, that talks so deeply and descriptively about the crucifixion of Jesus and, and the beautiful feet we read about this morning expresses the range of where this message will be revealed. God goes before and guards behind. The washing of the feet is enough as we travel through the filth and the sin of this world with a wonderful message of reconciliation. In Isaiah 52, starting with verse 14, we read this in, the, in our, this is just a part of what we read this morning. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond any human likeness. So will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. I, I want to wash your feet. I, I, I want you to go as ambassadors for Christ with a message of reconciliation. Jesus said to the disciples to wash one another's feet. World missions start here. God uses flawed people. The only, the only way to be reconciled is forgiveness. Love covers a multitude of sins. Jesus showed through this foot washing how much he loved. And this is how we wash each other's feet. We love each other. We forgive each other. You know, we certainly have many from here that we have sent and, and, and are helping send and, and proclaim the gospel of peace. You know, we just saw this morning from to unreached people groups. The message of reconciliation over different parts of the world. You know, I, I hope Jesus is washing our feet. I hope Jesus is preparing us to carry our message to the world. And... I'm stepping out a little bit. <laughs> it's a symbol. a symbol of forgiving that we wash one another's feet and we forgive each other you know we're, we're all flawed you and I we need to forgive each other and let that message of reconciliation permeate this world with this message of reconciliation to the world let's pray Lord we come to you today Lord, we thank you for washing our feet with your justification through just to the, the believing with our hearts and confessing with our mouth. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. And Lord, as, as, as servants of, of such great a debt to a holy God, Lord, may we Take that forgiveness and forgive those that trespass against us. Forgive those that sin against us. Forgive those that offend us so that we can be a people of light in this dark, dark world. Lord, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Next song we're going to sing is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And I, I, I will...
given opportunity, I, I, I would like, love to wash your feet, if you, if, but don't feel like there's any pressure. <laughs> I came prepared. <laughs> I got dirty feet. Let's stand for this song. May the fountain of God's streaming flow cleanse us from all our sins. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never cease, call for songs about his praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon. To thy redeeming love, here I raise my enemies. Here by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. from all unrighteousness. May your face shine upon us and may our face with ever increasing glory shine your light to this dark world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I will serve thee because I love thee, you have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Heart aches, broken.
precious memories how they linger how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the midnight precious sacred scenes unfold precious father loving mother fly across the lonely years and old home scene of my childhood in fond memory of tears precious memories how they linger how they 